Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we'll talk about API portals. Should you build them or should you buy them? It's an important decision to make. And with us, we have Alan Knabe of API. Hey, Alan, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for being here again. Um, and I'm looking forward to have this discussion with you. And we'll talk about like an API portal. If you want to provide APIs to some consumer, is that something that you should build your own as a software or should you buy some kind of off the shelf product? In your experience, let's start by simply answering when should you really build your API portal? Okay, there are cases where you should be building your own API portal, right? We've, uh, we've been here before, right? Um, those cases, right, are for me, there's, there's two primary ones. That is number one, your corporate design, your brand identity is so strong that you really need to 100% control the, the look and feel of the portal. All right. As an example, I've used it lots of times, but the Mercedes-Benz developer portal, if you go there, it's, it's a work of art. It looks beautiful, right? You're never going to take an off-the-shelf developer portal, API portal, and, and get to that, right? You could get to maybe like 95% or something like this. Um, but Mercedes has obviously decided that, you know, to invest a couple of million in that to get it you know, really probably, yeah. aligned. Well, yeah, that's probably what it was, to get it really you know, on, on brand, on target, because Mercedes and the design philosophy is so important. So you know, if, if the design of the thing is really important to you, you probably want to you know, build it out yourself. The second case for building it is the whole um, you know, ask, ask your developer book. Um, I'm going to reference that here and say, OK, they talk about if something is core to your organization's processes. So if, if you're, for example, selling an API like Twilio sell APIs, you need to own that experience. So when we talk about API portal, because they sell APIs, they, they built their entire product around that, right? And they don't need to take um, anything off the shelf. They built it themselves. Um, coming back to that, uh, ask your developer book again, we, we have the situation where if something isn't a core part of your business, if you're selling, you know, like tractors or something like that, then you then building is probably uh, not the right route for you. You can take something like off the shelf in that case. So John Deere probably would not build their own API portal. Is what you're I saying. hope not. And I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and I, yeah, I totally agree. I think, like you said, right. If, if, if you're, if your product basically is an API, if really all that you are offering to the consumer really is the API, then you really have to own that. And yeah. I think, like you said, right, it would be would be a shame if if your product managers come back and say we should do this slightly differently because that would improve our product. Then you would have to say, ah, but we cannot do this because our portal thingy doesn't allow us to do this. Right. <laughs> That would be really bad. Okay. But I think the point that you're making there, I find very interesting. So in one case, you're saying if you're willing to invest um, because of corporate branding um, a lot of money, then you should do that. Yep. But that's a big decision to make. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think, you know, for Mercedes, it's a large company. So they, they can yeah. kind of offset that over a long time, right? or if your core product is an API. But I think these are pretty corner cases, right? There are not that many situations where things are like this. Yeah. And in, in any other case, you should probably rather consider buying one. So, so what are the typical considerations where you see where when you talk to organizations um, with you know, your API-able hat on, where they talk to you and say, um, you know, this is what we want to do and this is why we're considering buying something. What, what are the typical patterns that you see there? Okay, so, so typically, um, starting in the beginning, they have API management available to them. They're using, you know, whatever platform they have. They have already gateways up and running. 
And the first piece of the device is basically if you can use the API portal that comes bundled with the API management, um, then do so, right? You know, if you're paying for it, you have a license. And if it's good enough for you, then go ahead and use it. Typically, we find when customers come to us, they've tried it. And for whatever reason, it's not good enough, right? So we've had mm -hmm. this, you know, I had it myself in the previous two companies I worked with, tried it. And for whatever reason, there's many, many reasons why for you, it's not a, a good fit. So yeah, but that's the first thing that I would say. Okay, if, if, if it works for you, if it's just like getting an API key to a developer, then a you know, standard developer portal is fine, right? Also internal cases where um, it's not so important, the look and feel, et cetera. So yeah, go ahead and use that. But if you want to do a little bit more, right? So, so if you are talking about you know, API economy, um, doing a little bit more with the portal, also addressing um, personas outside of the developer. So, you know, we've realized now that there are more than developers involved in the decision-making pro process, right? So you've got business managers who maybe want to understand what the API is to make a decision on it, right? Um, but if, if you can't explain it to them in a way they can understand, right? And it's not rocket science, it's product management. So you need to be able to get the API, put them into... Um, you know, mix and match APIs together to satisfy a use case, shall we say. That's the most basic thing you want to be doing. And uh, these kind of things, if you, if you want to be doing those kind of things, then that, that's why customers are coming, coming to us and saying, okay, um, can you help us with this? And in that case, I think, like you said, I, like what you've seen in the past, I think also is that the, the portal, the bundled portals sometimes are good enough, sometimes they're not quite good enough. And then yeah. organizations are looking at what should we do? Um, and then sometimes the the result of that then is to say, oh, okay, in that, we, that case, we'll build our own. Um, so in which... So in most cases, you would say don't don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. But what are the what are some of the core things where you would say if you if you don't want to build your own or maybe you shouldn't build your own? What are the core things that you think would be important to look for um, in terms of buying something and how it functions together with the management that you have in place? Right. So I mean, number one kind of thing would be like if if monetization is important to you, that that's where a lot of companies are looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I find it's, it's, it's like a switch, right? Even monetization is important and, and they absolutely must have it in every little edge case you, you want there, right? Um, so, so that's something to, to look for when you're deciding if it supports monetization, you know, can you pay by credit card and, and whatever, all of those things. Um, what we also find is, is um, how, how the underlying API gateways are, are supported and connected. So I, I think this is something that's been overlooked so far in terms of what's been out there on the market for an off-the-shelf um, developer portal. Mm -hmm. In that most of the solutions so far have required you to become another consumer of your API. So you, you, you're kind of like wiring up individual APIs and saying packaging them and saying, okay, developers come and consume. Um, but for the enterprise, it's, it's, it's a given requirement that when I make a change in my API gateway, it's reflected in the portal, right? So I want, I want to be able to go to my API portal, and I want to be able to see a list of all of my APIs in the underlying API gateway. And if there's a change, it's reflected backwards and forwards. I want to be able to pull the documentation from the API gateway. I also want to be able to use the analytics in the API gateway to see those consumers so I don't want one consumer of the API, which is making like millions of API calls. I want to see the fact that there's a hundred developers in the system using the API. That's why I paid so much money for the API management in the first place. So yeah, that's the, the connection to that deep connection to the API gateway has been overlooked. And that's what people are saying, okay, it's a mandatory requirement. Um, what we're also seeing for various reasons, companies are coming to us with multiple API gateways or multiple API management vendors, 
right? So and there's a hundred reasons why your organization has multiple gateways. That's not going to that. And enterprise architect's worst nightmare, but it's the reality of the situation, right? Um, I think so, yes. It's something you see more and more. And um, yeah, I mean, the way that we, and then, you know, when I worked at Xway, um, we kind of addressed that reality uh, very aggressively, right? And said, this is just what's going to happen. And, and you may not like it, um, and that's okay. But it's just going to happen, and it's better to be prepared for that than saying, oh, this should never have happened, right? It's like, that doesn't right. help you a lot. Yeah, dreams versus reality, right? So that's what we're, we're seeing as well is that um, it could even be a migration case. Someone's migrating from IBM to Kong, and during that migration of you know, moving APIs from one platform to the other, you want to have like that continuity of, of developer experience, shall we say, that you don't need to bring up two developer portals and say to a developer, oh, for that API, please log in here and for the other one, log in there. You just want one portal that connects into both um, API gateways at the same time. So that that single kind of developer experience. Um, the, these, these are the things that, you know, customers are coming to us with and saying, okay, they need. And I think, you know, just looking at the market, so, so APIable, your company, right, you're, you have a product in that space and, and you see other offerings that are popping up in that space as well. And I think just, you know, looking at the market and seeing that there are products that appear and that are getting some traction is, is proof that this is something that happens more and more, that there is a need for it and that people are, are looking for that kind of thing. And, and what you said, I think to me also, just coming from more the enterprise space, so to speak, it makes a lot of sense to see that market becoming better supported by products because we, I mean, we have argued for APIs and you know more decentralized API production for a long time. And then the question is, okay, if that really happens and it is happening more and more, what's the best way to manage that, right? And still end up with this consistent um, developer experience at the very top that, that you can maintain. And I, I think it's just something that we will see more and more. Are there any other like things that you see in the market that kind of support this or that point in this general direction where you say, you know, these are some other things that actually help people to deal with this in a way where they don't have to build everything themselves, but like different kind of pieces that fall into place. Do you see something else? Well, what we're seeing now is that I think, you know, the timing is, is right to, to address this problem, right? So people have kind of realized that the, the API management vendors aren't going to fix these problems, right? The, the API portal or developer portals as they're commonly known have, mainly remain unchanged for 10 years, right? So there's normally PHP behind it, right? And uh, no one wants to touch PHP anymore. But so we're seeing lots of like startups and APIable is just one. You can go out and find a whole bunch of companies that are now trying to address all like these over the top issues. And uh, again, coming back to my own experience, you know, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I joined a new company and you know, very new API program. And I was kind of shocked that it still took over 12 months to like get an API out at the door, right? Um, and I think many com companies have now seen this and said, okay, um, how can we reduce that time from 12 months to like one week uh, it would be the best thing. So there's many, many new products coming on the market and you've got companies, you know, specializing in you know, just developer documentation, other people in SDKs, us with the API portal and um, API analytics, API monetization, all of this like over the top stuff that you would need to build yourself. You need to build that into your API portal if it was important to you. Um, you no longer have to do that. These pieces are available. And what we're trying to do is like, you know, collect everything into, into one solution so you can say okay click one button and it's all there for you right but um yeah we're really a good position now where 
there's there's not really a need anymore to build your own portal. You, you can really, you know, look around, find out what's important to you and, you know, either stitch everything together or try and find a solution that works for you. Yeah, but in some cases, as we discussed in the beginning, right, you may still want to build your own, but mm -hmm. these are probably really it's a niche of cases where you where you would want to do this and other than that i think yes building your own i think that's that's a good um that's a good thing to do in those cases otherwise just buy one I think. that's yeah. good advice um alan is there any are there any closing thoughts you might want to share around this um, i think we've covered the topic pretty well um yeah. do you have anything to add well don't build your own API portal would be the, the, the key takeaway here, right? You know, I mean, that, that, that's that's pretty much it, right? If if you're on an API program and you have limited resources, you know, don't spend nine months and half of your budget building a portal and then getting there and it just doing kind of like a minimum set of of things, right? You know, just go out there and you know, first of all, say, okay, who is going to be the consumer of the API? And don't just stop at the developer. Keep going and thinking about, you know, API products and who's actually going to use this. And stop using the developer dot subdomain as well. Uh, transition to digital dot. Um, is, oh, is, okay. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Just we have to move away from developer dot, unless your API products are only for developers. Right. If if you're telling me that you know the only person that's ever going to use this this API is a developer, is the only person interested in the API are developers. So I, I don't know some some kind of like programming thing, right? But if um, if you're you know in a regular company and you have partners and customers there, the people you ultimately want to be using your APIs, right? And they invite their developer in at some point, so you have to have like a balance there. Um, but yeah, you, you, you definitely want to be, um, buying your portal. <laughs> exactly. I like the digital thing. I've, I haven't seen that. So have you seen that already where companies are putting out digital dot whatever dot com or dot yeah. io? Yeah, we, we, we yeah. did it at Swisscom. We did it at Swisscom. Ah, okay. Right. So, cool. so we're kind yeah. of we're product managers there and, uh, you know, Andrea was, was, I think the guy who had the idea to say, okay, it needs to come off developer and it needs to go on yeah. digital because if you go to digital dot, you could be any, uh, you could have any kind of like role and it's digital, like digital transformations for everybody, but developer, yeah, if you go, no, there, like, Ooh, okay, it's not for me. I'm, I'm going, I'm out of here. Right. You don't st stick around. So I, I would like to see us go to digital. Uh, and have a redirect from developer dot to digital dot. <laughs> okay, it's, I think that makes a lot of sense. Alan, thanks so much for joining and um, sharing your experience and your views. I hope that everybody got something out of this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more news from the API space. And with that, we're done for today. Thanks everybody for watching and see you next time. Bye. Thanks, bye-bye.